Today's episode of The Mom Game is brought to you by our friends at Gateway Buick GMC at LBJ and Jupiter. I know that buying a car can be stressful, but not a Gateway, because their slogan is, Gateway's got it. And just what does that mean? Well, it means Gateway's got a wide selection of new Buicks, GMCs, and GM-certified used vehicles, all competitively priced. Gateway's got it. In these busy times, you want a car dealer who makes things easy and convenient. Well, guess what? Gateway's got it. When you log on to gatewaybuickgmc.com, look for the shop, click, drive button. This allows you to shop from the comfort of your home, and who doesn't want that? In fact, it's as easy as one, two, three. One, select your vehicle. Two, create your offer. Three, schedule your delivery. And on top of all this, Gateway Buick GMC offers complimentary car washes for life. So when you want a dealer who has it all, Gateway's got it. You can find them online at gatewaybuickgmc.com or shop in person at LBJ and Jupiter. GMC, we are professional grade. Experience the new Buick. And welcome to episode 154 of The Mom Game. I'm Emily Jones. She's Julie Dobbs. We are back together again after it's been like two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks. Last week was impromptu. Last week was impromptu. I barely remember it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Yeah, last week I was on the struggle bus from the Super Bowl Uh um, from home. Ryder was struggling with the ant bed. That's right. How's he doing? Uh, Better. Okay. Yeah, he, had, he was having an allergic reaction to fire ant bites. Yes. Is he traumatized? Uh, he is. He's a little. He's staying away from ant bites. Kelly now. said they were back out on the golf course, the same golf course, the scene of the crime uh, two days ago, and he said every time he saw an ant bed, he was like, ah! screaming. And then yeah. Anna was going, ah! and so now I have two kids that are petrified of ant bed. Well, that's okay. That's okay. That's why to stay weird. away from him. Yeah. Uh, yes, I am no longer hungover. Um, <laughs> And I think, and I'm not saying I wasn't hungover, but I, I have come to realize in the days that have passed since that there might've been a little something else brewing in my house mm-hmm. because the next day, then Henry stayed home from school. He had a fever. Then Mike has been sick. So I am not trying to, um, make excuses uh-huh. for my <laughs> severe fogginess uh, last uh, episode yeah. when we shot the day after Super Bowl Sunday. But I do think there may have been some other factors that kind of made things even worse than they already were. Okay. And so, yeah. Did so, you get sick? All good. Um, I didn't. So I actually did start getting sick, like more sick to my stomach. I never, I don't think I had a fever. You know, what? it's so crazy with moms. Like, When's the last time you took your own temperature? I know you don't. You don't. But I've taken like I, I've in the last week I've taken like ten temperatures from between Mike and Henry, and so I'm like, why don't I ever take my temperature? Because it doesn't matter. You can have a temperature. It and doesn't you can't matter. Quit doing anything. No. You got to keep doing everything. This is true. This yeah. is true. And so, and we've talked about this before. The husband's being sick is just. It's just something like I've never <laughs> seen. Like, I know. And luckily our kids were out of town. So I didn't, ha- he didn't have, I mean, there was nothing for me to be bitching about him not doing. I actually got a shit ton of work done on uh-huh. Sunday and Monday. Um, but he just was, it's just something. It's just something. So ills. And yeah, I mean, and just the, and I told you he goes into this baby talk mode that I'm just like, I can't help you when you're talking like a two-year-old. Like I just, you are a grown ass man <laughs> and I love you a lot. I love you with all my heart. But, and I, and I need you to be, I need right. you to be manly. Like I need you to. We don't but want the, them being wimpy. No. We're and he's the no, only ones that can act like that. I mean, I will tell you, this is the only time when the man acts this way mm-hmm. because when he's healthy, for goodness sake, you would think he could knock down a fucking 10 foot tall brick wall, whatever. Yeah. It's this, you know, what? but it's when they get sick. Yep. It's, I mean, it's such a phenomenon. Yep. And I don't know if Mike is extra bad. And then I think what makes it worse is he knows how bad it bothers me. And so then he does it more, yeah. which is a sign of a fantastic marriage. When you, <laughs> when you identify something that bugs your spouse and then you do, do it, it over more. and over and over. So anyway. Trying to get it right. Yeah, Just right. trying to keep you on your toes. Uh, I guess so. So anyway, we, we've survived the McCoy illness of uh. tw- the first round of 2023 and everybody appears to be on the mend, but it's never yeah. ending. It is never ending, but I'm happy to be back with you. I have a surprise. Oh, you do a surprise. Uh, brought you something. This is exciting. Beans. <laughs> I brought you beans. 
<laughs> Thank you. I brought you my world famous pinto beans. Wow, I'm so excited. I don't I can, know if it's my best batch. I feel like the last I can batch. Feed my family tonight. Well, I don't know if that's enough for your family, but oh. yeah, I should have brought more. No, but this I is plenty. I um, Thanks, I I don't make a lot of things well, but I really feel like I have. I can do a pretty good job with pinto well, beans. Well, I'm excited. So I can't wait I, for you to try them. Well, I'm excited to try them. I don't really like order beans or love beans unless they're good beans. Right. If I eat good beans, I'm like, oh, I should eat more beans. Yeah. I just I, need so to have I, good I, beans. I put a pot on on Sunday Aww. to take care of my ailing husband. And so I thought I'm going to bring some to Julie. And I also put myself in a food coma. Do you ever do this? <laughs> I ate two bean and cheese burritos. <laughs> And then I felt weird, like I needed, like I, I think I ate too much. And so I like went and laid down on the couch Yeah, in the fishing room, which is the yeah. best room in the whole is house. It, does it it's, get pitch black? No, it doesn't. That's the only bad part. Oh. Um, but it's super quiet. Yeah. Is it a couch or a bed? There's a couch. Okay. Um, and I fell asleep for like for 30 you, minutes. That means you needed it. It does. But, and I feel fine now, but you feel so groggy. I don't take naps ever. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, like driving over here, I was like, I feel drunk. Like what's happening? Haze. Like just groggy. Yeah. So I I get the I get the point of it, but then I'm like, is it worth it to take the nap? I don't know. I still don't know. And I'm it's a daily struggle for yeah, me. Yeah, because now you're with my getting job. Yeah. Like I am not used I'm not a morning person. I know. I'm not. Like even before this, even when the kids had to get up early for school and everything, I mean, I would I was not that mom that's like up before them, like having everything ready, like Pour, poured my coffee, have their breakfast made. And then you go tap them on the shoulder and wake up. Uh-huh. Like I was not that, like I was the opposite of that. I was like last minute alarm, like running upstairs and be like, wake right. up, here's your stuff. Like, which is not a good start to the day. We know this. Every parenting yeah. professional will tell you that's the worst way to start your day, your kid's day, everything. Cause they wake up stressed. But I just like, I, I loved that little bit of sleep I needed. So then you cut off so what time are you getting up? About an hour and a half every day of sleep. So what time are you getting up? I So I started at 520, and then I realized that I could get ready a lot quicker than that because I basically need to leave the house by 6. Okay. And leaving the house by 6 gets me there. I'm the last of the three of us every day, but I don't care. No, um, you shouldn't care. Yeah. Um, that's like kind of the latest that I can leave. So it started at 520, and then I was like, okay, I think I have a little bit of wiggle room here because I don't really need to like get ready. If there was, if I had to come here after or something, I'd put a little more effort in. Um, but then I pushed it back to like 530, and now I'm trying like 540. I even did like a 545, and I was still out the door by six. So okay, it's can working. I, can I tell you something completely counterproductive and sure. intuitive to what you're telling me? So I heard you today. I was listening to you guys today, this morning. Um, Thank you. By the way, I've been timing my pee. I'm at 16 seconds. You are? Uh Uh-huh. The guys I work with have really long pees. Right. I feel like men pee longer than women. They do. But we'll talk about that later. Um, But (laughs) I think you should go, I think you should get up at five and I think you should get on your Peloton. What? Yep. Emily. I do. Five. It will change your entire day. No, I believe you. I do believe you. You will feel, just do a 20 minute ride. what time you wake up? Uh, So Mike gets up at five. I get up at 530. So he gets up, gets out the door. I kind of lay in bed, probably check email. And then by 530, I'm up. That way I can get either a run or a Peloton in before I wake the kids up at between 615 and 630. Yeah. But it, I'm telling you, I know, we've talked and, about this, and I get, like, and I, I, I and you're, you, you, you're dreading it and you're like, uh, it's, and, but once I get on there, I know. Or start running, and then and then when I'm done, I'm like, I feel like I've effing conquered the world. And I I'm know. like, I've got this done before my kids have even woken up. I've I checked know. that off the list, and yeah. I feel good. I'm not, it's not weighing on my mind. And I know not everyone is as OCD as me as far as checking shit off your list and all that kind of stuff. But I will tell you, it changed. It changes your whole mind frame yeah. throughout your entire day. Five a.m. is so early. It is so early. It is. It's very early. I think if I could get myself to sleep, that's the that's problem. The key. That's, that's the problem Mm -hmm. is that you it's going to bed at a decent time. And even if you get in bed at a decent time, falling asleep, I mean, it's not the easiest thing to do. So anyway, that that's my, I know you didn't ask for my advice, but I always like your, I would encourage you to try it a couple of times Mm -hmm. just to see how different you feel. Yeah. Cause honestly I could go to work like kind of gross. It doesn't matter. I don't have to shower. If I have nothing after I can just come home and then shower. Right. They don't, I mean, those, you're the dudes you work with aren't coming all gussied up for work or showered or whatever. Maybe they are, who cares, but who can slap some deodorant on and yeah. Perfume. You'll be fine. One day, one day, just try try it one day. 
and see what you think. I will try it. I won't be for a while. Okay. Oh, that's right. Because <laughs> yeah. bury the lead. Most important news of the, no, the day. The yes. most important news is that you were hungover. And that. Oh my gosh. That was fun. I was so excited about it. The most important news is that I brought you beans. <laughs> that's the, the second most important Thank you. news. The okay. Third is your hangover. You, the second is your bean. I'm never. I mean, for fuck's sake, I've come in. I one day I do the show hungover. One day. But I've done it. Like I am hungover a lot, although not as much lately. But no. like, I have bad hangovers. There was a stretch. There was a stretch. I was, was like, oh my there. God. And so I think when I saw you finally fucking hung over <laughs> after so like excited. however many years of doing this, I was very excited. I was like, okay, okay, she's one of us. Well, cheers to my hangover and just making like Julie feel the good. Perfect amount and then go to bed and feel perfect in the morning and wake up at five and go running no matter what, no matter if you're your wine. Like, it's a little bit like, how the F did she do this? Does she ever not work out or be hung over? Uh, the answer is and I'm always, just, it was, yes, it was like like a little like just satisfying to well, see good. you hung over well, <laughs> trying to do an episode of the mom game and it was a complete it, disaster and I feel like disaster. we need to apologize to anyone who watched that show <laughs> and then my dogs I mean it was just like I was struggling so bad uh-huh. uh the whole thing was a struggle uh, yeah. everything I was like trying Life real hard you like, were talk sports and you're just like are we doing this show right now I feel like doesn't we're not even, even doing a show doesn't right even now I feel like we're doing a show like, no Emily we are like, I'm talking about Kyrie <laughs> Give me something. I know. Well, I would like to thank you for your contributions to the mom game um, while I was on the struggle okay. bus. Um, but I am glad I could make you feel good about yourself with my hangover. But let's talk about the thank surgery. You. you had the surgery. I did. You I had, had the surgery. Sur- and it was our last show. Yeah. And it's a it, it was a lot. Yeah. And I can already tell if, if, it's, if you don't mind me saying so, I can tell, girl, I can yeah. tell some stuff has moved around and it oh, looks yeah. good. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a it's kind of a weird deal. We were talking about a little bit before we shot. But but so I had to have a what technically was called a revision to reconstruction with fat grafting. Hey, so, so you to, just to in case anybody's just tuning in for the first time here on episode yes. 154, you are a breast cancer survivor. Yes. You had a double mastectomy yes. when you were diagnosed with breast cancer. Yes. How many years ago? Um, it was like eight years ago. Okay. Um, I was 28 years old. So the, um, the original replacement boobies mm-hmm. started to do some weird things. Yes. Okay. They, they just like, because one side was radiated. And so the side that uh, I had radiation on, like just is really tight and like, doesn't like, it just is different. Like the skin's kind of effed up because okay. of the radiation. Um, and so over time, like weird things happen. And they told me when I had reconstruction that this would probably happen. They were like, you might need to come in for like just a surgery every once in a while. No big deal to like fix it up or whatever. And so I've already had one. I had a fat grafting one maybe three years ago. And that one was like specifically because I had like a hole in my armpit. Basically, it was just like a big old like cave, like and it drove me nuts. And so they wanted to take some fat to like fill in that hole. And I don't think that that one worked. Like I think they say sometimes that the fat will reject like the old fat will reject the new spot. Sometimes it latches on. Sometimes it doesn't. So I don't think that that one worked because I still had a big hole. And then on top of that, I had like um just it, it on my paperwork, it was like deformity on like the yeah. right side. It was just like really like bumpy and lumpy and yucky. And it, you couldn't really tell, like you could tell in a bathing suit or like a tank top. And, you know, Kelly obviously could tell when I showed him, but he was so nice about it. He was like, I don't care. Like no one else is going to see. I'm like, no, this is bad. Like this one's really bad. So when I, sh- I made an appointment to go show my plastic surgeon and, um, he's the same one that did the original reconstruction and he's awesome. He's like one, he's in D magazine and stuff for being a wonderful surgeon. And, um, I, when I showed it to him, he's like, yeah, let's just go in and fix that. Let's just fix it. No big deal. So I was like, okay. So we put it on the calendar and it was last Wednesday. Um, and then it's just like, you go on with your life and you kind of forget it's even on the calendar and you're like looking at like Monday, you're like, Oh, Wednesday surgery. Okay. I guess I should tell my work, you know? And I had, I had given them a heads up a while back. But Wednesday, I did the surgery. It was supposed to be at 10, and then we didn't start till noon. So I laid there for two hours, like, thinking about it. Um, but it went really well, I think. It was, like, an hour and a half, and um, Kelly was there. And it was really cool, like, because Kelly and I started dating when I was – or no – we were already dating when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, but when I was going through chemo and everything, like I've talked about it in detail, like he was amazing. He proposed when I was going through chemo. Like we just have a weird 
bond over that, which is like a terrible thing that happened to me, but it, it created a, a really awesome bond for us. And so whenever I have a surgery, because I think this has been honestly like my seventh or something since I had breast cancer, there's lots of little things, big things, all kinds of things that you just do for like maintenance or the hysterectomy, you know, that was yep. just last April, like hasn't even been a year since that one. Um, so we just like go back into that mode and like he takes care of me and it's yeah. like amazing. Like he just does such a good job and I don't want anyone else in the world like to help me besides him. And then my mom's wonderful too. She comes and helps with the kids. It's a whole thing. We all just like revert back to form. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, okay, this is how this works, you know, whatever. And it was just good. It was like actually kind of weirdly like good for us. And I know. I was just about to say, it yeah. probably reminds each of you like- yeah how much you value each other and love each yeah. other and want to be there for each other right. and all that kind of right. stuff. And yeah. how, like, that's just your person, you know? Yeah. Um, and then I also oh, had, yeah, it was sweet. And that was, um, that was Wednesday. And then I had the rest of the week off. So it was also wonderful to have nothing on my calendar through Sunday, like Wednesday. Through but you Sunday. started getting bored. I did start. You were texting. I was like, I'm bored. Uh, yeah. I was like, just sleep, get some rest, yeah. enjoy the time. And they're like, I'm bored. What, can I get some clips? You're Let's like, do that's this. the last thing I want to hear is you. Like, that's the worst thing your kids can say to you as a mom is I'm bored. And then I'm over here like texting you. For some reason. I'm like, I'm bored. Uh, what else could I do? Um, but no, that was wonderful because I have lost a lot of sleep since I started this job. So I was sleeping like crazy. Like I would take a nap. I'd walk around the house, like snack on something, go back, take my pain pills, go back to sleep. Like that was my day. So, um, in the end, like that part of it, I really enjoyed, <laughs> I really enjoyed just like unplugging and, and, yeah. and just sleeping and resting. And I had both the kids with me, you know, all weekend and my mom and Kelly. So it was great. Um, and then, yeah, the surgery, uh, is, I, I joked with you before this, it was like, I think that my, my doctor, like once, you know, we talked about it a little bit. It's funny. You don't really talk about it till you're the day of, like you have the one appointment. He's like, yeah, let's go operate. And then the day of he draws on you mm -hmm. and he's like, how about we do this? Let's do this. Let's do this. And I was just like, okay, yeah. It's like, take as much as you want. Ha ha ha. And he did <laughs> like he did. Love I, it. I didn't know, you know, and he's a, he's a plastic surgeon who does reconstruction, but he also does plastic surgery for people that just want a good old fashioned boob job or like lipo or whatever. So he knows like what, you know, what to do and what people want. And obviously we all want the same shit. Like make me skinny and make my boobs bigger. We're right. all the same. So um, that's basically what I did. And I feel like he like, went to town. And, and so it's a little bit of a, it was a little bit more, I think, than I was like yeah. preparing for when it's it major. To, so I mean, that's, that's serious yeah, shit. Yeah. Like incisions I didn't know would be there really, or because I, and I gave him like full Liberty. I was like, I trust you. Like, let's, let's do whatever you think. Um, it's funny. It's like an artist. It's like, just yeah, go to town. I know. Yeah. But he's in there like, it's so, I oh, I told you about like last time I had surgery, how much it freaks me out just yeah. to think about it. Like somebody in there messing yeah. with your guts and stuff. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but, uh, they did a wonderful job as always. And I do have this, like, I feel like an old, like a lady in the olden times they had to wear the like corset, corset thing. Yeah. He calls it a binder, but I have to wear it for two weeks so I can like barely breathe. But, um, and I'm, got I really can't good wear, posture. yeah, and I can't wear like normal clothes and I can't eat much. <laughs> like I eat like. Like today, you were talking about having two burritos. I had one breakfast taco because I had a sweet friend that brought over a big bag of breakfast tacos. And I was like, I pulled two out because that's kind of what I would normally do. Yeah. Yeah, they weren't giant. I had one and I was like, oh, I can't eat anymore. So it's a good diet tool too, I nice. guess. Um, but yeah, no, it was it was good. It was. Well, I can't wait for two weeks from now when you hated. take off all your clothes and show us. I'm not going to take off all my clothes and <laughs> show you. <laughs> Well, I'm glad but you're okay. I'll take off all the padding and okay. all the shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah well, you look good. You. I'm glad the surgery went well. Um, thanks. And I'm glad that all your hands were on deck. Yeah. For thank you. you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. You just took something out of there. Okay. okay. Well, I feel like timing wise, we don't need it. Okay. All right. We can maybe revisit that at a later time. Yeah. Okay. All right. I got it. Uh, okay, let's do talk a little sports courts because we do have a guest coming up that is very sportsy. Uh, my friend Levi Weaver, yes. who covers the Rangers for The Athletic. So we'll be talking Rangers with him from Surprise, Arizona, which awesome. I will be headed there in just a couple of weeks. But Levi is there right now, so he's going to fill us in on some stuff. And also yeah. I want to talk about a tweet, a tweet I sent out last night um, that, yeah, the, the right way. 
it makes me crazy. It grinds your gears. It gets in your craw. my gears. Yes, it's all up in my craw. <laughs> um, but let's quick hit the Mavs. And there's not a ton going on um, mm-hmm. NBA All-Star break right now. But let's let's quick hit the sports scores brought to us by our friends at Panther City. Speaking of sports, a good one to catch. It sure is. Uh, like you just mentioned right now, is a little bit of a dead time. Sometimes our teams are on the road. Sometimes your teams are too far away. Sometimes your teams cost too much money to go see. Sometimes it's too much for you and little children to go all the way out to Arlington or the American Airlines Center and park and blah, 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 blah. But you want to watch some sports with your family. We have the answer. That is Panther City Lacrosse. Panther City Lacrosse is located in Fort Worth, um, and it's just a really fun, action-packed night out that you can go to with your family and friends. The price point is right. Tickets start at $25. Um, it's at Dickie's arena, which is wonderful. They have really good food. When you and I were out there, we ate way too much cause it was so good. Those nachos, like brisket nachos or tam- the tamales, the brisket nachos. Oh yeah. The food was so really good. good they have wine. Um, and it's a really fun sport to watch. Um, They will take the field coming up again here on March 4th. Like I said, tickets, $25. You can go to panthercitylax.com March 4th at 7 p.m. versus Saskatchewan Rush. That's where Kelly's dad's from. Oh, Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. And and there's a special uh, code. There's a special link on our link tree. Yeah where you can get uh, discounted tickets yep. for exclusively for our mom game listeners. So thanks to Panther City Thank Lacrosse. Thank you so much. I love Head on with out them. Yeah. and support the laxes. Mm-hmm. Get it? Short for lacrosse. Get it? I get it. Uh, okay. NBA All-Star Game. I mean, I've watched a hot second of it. I can't even deal. It's so dumb. I, I can't deal. Yeah. Um, it's dumb. But um, I did like seeing Luca and Kyrie be friends. Mm-hmm. In front of everybody else. Yes. And uh, I liked how LeBron drafted Luca and Kyrie to his team. Kyrie first and then Luca. And everyone's like, well, that means he wants Kyrie to come to LA. I'm like, because he drafted him in the All Star game? I don't know. Um, but I, the one thing I took away from that whole experience, and I didn't watch much of the stuff besides the dunk contest guy, the little yeah, guy. Mac McClung, yeah. Texas Tech. <laughs> oh right, absolutely. <laughs> that was funny. She guns up. Yeah, that was funny. The one thing I took away was. Um, the best moment from the whole weekend was when Luca and Kyrie were sitting on the bench during the game. And he did the shoulder and tap. And he did the shoulder tap. Like, d- Luca's just, so funny. He is, Luca's like, he does seem super cute and Super funny. cute. And yeah. also like a sense of humor, hum, humor of, of like a 70 year old man. Uh-huh. Like, or like your or friend's 12 dad. year old. Yeah. Or like a 12 year old. Like, or 12 year old. Yeah. Like, he, yeah. I'm going to tap you on the shoulder and look yeah. the other way. It's like, yeah, when you're little and you're like, you yeah. know, like maybe Mike would do that to like Hattie's friend or right. like Kelly would do, you know what I right. mean? It's like, but yeah, Kyrie was sitting next to him and Luca put his hand around him and tapped him on the shoulder and Kyrie totally bit and fell for it. It was like, whoa, oh, oh. And you know <laughs> and what Luke is funny is dying. that that continues to be one of the greatest gags really ever. Does. I don't know why it never gets old. Why it's like it so how funny? it's like how dudes feel about farts. Like to, <laughs> farts will always be funny yeah. to dudes. Yeah. And like to me, for some reason, that will always be funny if you can pull that off. It's, like it's it's insanity. Oldest trick in the book. Yes. Oldest trick in the true. book. And it ha- like it'll happen to me in the clubhouse, especially I remember Prince Fielder used to do that shit to me all the time. He like, did? Yes. And I'd be like, or, or, or uh, you know, Rugi would do it. I'd be like, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very big, it's a real big player in the clubhouse. And, you know, you fall for it and then they, you know, it. It's like you just like fell flat on your face, right. like the way they react. Like, ah, I got you. I got you. And like really, the payoff is like someone looking to their right. right. Like, like, <laughs> but it's really funny. It's really. It never gets old. It's cute. I'm gonna. It's just innocent. Gonna, I feel like I need to mix that in a little more. You should. I'm gonna try. Who are you gonna pull it on? I don't know. I'm gonna somebody at the grocery store. Oh. <laughs> Oh my God, I dare you. Like I go to dare the grocery you, store. Dare you do it to a stranger I out and about. I'll have to go. With the gas station. What other on the public pump places next to you? do I visit? <laughs> so I sure as fuck don't go to the grocery store. You order everything. Well, yeah, I mean, Miss Vicky goes twice a yeah, week and oh, I try Vicky. to, yeah, yeah. I, try, I try to avoid it at all costs. Yeah. Because uh, anyway, me too, yeah, but I don't me. have anyone that goes. And so <laughs> well, just don't have much you just have shit delivered. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do want you to try that in the wild. Okay. In the you wild. You held true on your being promise. I now did. You have to hold true on the um, shoulder tap okay. promise. All right. And I'll report back. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can't wait. Okay. So NBA. Also, also, another thing I got from the NBA All-Star game is very few of those guys actually wanted. Oh my God. They did not so give it. a F. Uh, okay. Stars. 
What's yeah. happening? Um, they, I feel like, I'm feeling like things are starting to get out of control. It's making me nervous. Yeah. Um, they lost four in a row. Um, yeah. But they are still winning a lot of the time in overtime. So they still get a point. Mm -hmm. um, but they just lost to Columbus at home. Columbus is really bad. Like maybe the worst team in the league. Uh, they should not have lost to Columbus. So you do want to just uh, make sure that you don't fall into any sort of funk here at the end of this season. Um, I think that they'll be okay. The trade deadline is coming up for Dallas. So they actually are. So they're tied in points with Vegas uh, second in the Western conference, but they both have 72 points. So it must be overtime loss situation. The stars 12 overtime points. That's insane. That is insane. So that means they've lost in overtime 12 times. Yeah. Wow. And I think that, um, I think it's such a mental thing. I do overtime. Yeah. And so if you go into overtime and you're like, Oh, if here we go again, we mm -hmm. suck at this and blah, blah, blah. And you know, it, it, bam, it's over because it is sudden death. Um, but, uh, We'll see. They had like a three day break in the action, which is kind of nice. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday with no games, Wednesday night, they'll be back home against Chicago. And then they go to Vegas. Poor Kelly has to go to Vegas and have a Friday night off this mm, week. Poor guy. I know. Um, so I think they'll get things back on track. I hope, but it's nice because they have enough cushion. I, I think yeah. usually this is the point where we're like, Oh yeah. Are we gonna how many, playoffs? yeah. How many games left? Um, let's see. They've played 57. So 82 minus 57. 25. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Kind of in the home stretch. Oh, dude. We're getting yeah, there. You're getting there. You're getting there. That's we exciting. We are getting there. Um, okay. Let's hit a little TMG news desk because we got to get to Levi here very shortly. Um, brought to us by our friends at Early Bird CBD. Duly, when you, when you decide you're going to do it, your thing, be sure you took some last night. Early Bird CBD, mm -hmm. they'll just chill you out. So did Kelly. Take Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. uh, take them a little early. That way it gives you some time to decompress and then hit the bed yeah. and you'll be good. Yeah. Early Bird CBD is amazeball. It is a CBD gummy that has just a hint of THC, just enough to give you that little zzz to make you feel good, chill you out, make you relax. I swear by them. I've got to email Eric today because I am almost out. Um, you know, it's, you can use it for, if you're just hanging out at yeah, the house or if chill. you're trying to get some sleep or whatever, you know, everyone has different uses some for people them. Like going to like a concert and having one. Chilling out. Whatever. Absolutely. Chilling absolutely. Out, relaxing, relaxing all cool. Yeah. Oh, I know. Um, yeah, they're just designed to kind of put a smile on your face, mm -hmm. chill you the F out. As I like to say, I don't think that's a part of the official tagline. <laughs> um, but we are huge, huge supporters and proponents of, Early Bird CBD gummies. I'm super excited to have them as a partner on the mom game. And we are super excited to be able to offer you a chance to try them for yourself. First time users can go to earlybirdcbd.com slash TMG to get 20% off your first order. I've turned a number of my friends onto Early nice. Bird and they are digging. Yes. And that's also in our link tree. Our link tree is really the place to go. You guys go to our link. Go tree. There's a lot of really cool stuff. There. The link tree. Get all of our discounts. Yes. It's got all our social medias. Yes. Um, okay. A couple of things on the news desk and I will. So, uh, the tiger tampon thing. I mean, I feel yeah. like we need to discuss this. We do. I just don't see what the big deal is. I don't either. Are you offended by it? Like as a woman who had a period at one point before you got all your organs taken Here's out. To Same. Us not having to use tampons. Like the best thing um, ever. I just feel like we we're just going and listen, I I'm not the right police, I'm not the wrong police. I just feel like we're we've just we're we're going way too far. I feel I we I think we do need to be more aware of things and all that. But my goodness, like So how did it so he, I, he out drove him. He handed him a yeah. tampon. It was, uh, what was his, what's his name? Who was the Justin Thomas? Oh, who I know oh, now. Right. I mean, friends. in on full swing, the document, the Netflix series about the PGA tour. I've already watched the so whole thing. Good. It's really good. And I'm not super into golf. I like it, but I'm not super into it. I, it makes me want to watch it all, much more. Yeah. The dude, Joel, uh, which I'm only on episode Joel three. McHale, Joel, the the bigger heavy set dude. That's like, I mean, man, somebody's got to be the 75th best golfer in the oh. world. Like he's not trying to be like, yeah, I forget his last name. Anyway, I, I'm an, I'm obsessed with him. I think he's awesome. Anyway, it's just a cool like behind the scenes look at these guys' personalities. Blah blah. Anyway, full swing is amazing. Watch it on Netflix. But um, I just feel like yeah. So Tiger and Justin Thomas are very good friends. 
Uh, they, you know, people really joke funny. around. I didn't realize, I guess it. So like, he out drove yeah. it. Tiger out drives him. And yeah. then he like slips him a tampon. Yeah. It, and you know that Justin Thomas doesn't give a shit. No, um, but I don't but know. How did it unfold as far as like what, where all of a sudden he had to apologize? Because then someone zoomed in to see what the and exchange so it was. And so quick on social media. And then so somebody put it out there that Tiger handed him a tampon. So, it, I mean, and granted, there's no private moments on the fucking PGA Tour when you're on a golf course with no. a million cameras. I realize that. But I just don't see what. But it's just like any sport. Like, one of the things I love about. I, okay, yes, these people are professional athletes. But I love that they act like kids in love the sport and banter back and forth. It's one of the things that I love about like putting a mic on a player um, when they're playing a hockey game and hearing just how much dumb shit goes on, you know, between the players and that kind of thing. And that was just tiger and Justin having fun and like, yeah, we're, we're PGA tour, like we're PGA champs or whatever out here on the golf course, but we're just fucking having fun. We're just keeping it interesting. Golf right. is boring as hell. Like, can you imagine? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I just don't like, I, and I haven't, rounds. I haven't, well, I know I just haven't met any, any women who are offended. Right. Four days in a row. That's a right. lot. I'd be bored as hell. Right. I'd but be giving like, people shit. Right. Tapping them on the shoulder, yes. slipping them a tampon. Exactly. Like that's what I don't know. Love. I just, I don't, I don't know if there are, you know, women out there that are like, I can't believe you would say that. And it's so insulting to women and blah, blah, blah. Like I, to me, it's not, to me, it's not insult to me. I think it's funny. I Damn. mean, I, okay. I had my own moment with women's hygiene products. When we were in Costa Rica, there was, there was pads in the bathroom uh -huh. And I walked out like with them taped to my forehead or something like what just do you put, mean? I just start I just put them on because pa maxi pads are funny. Like, oh, so you were just trying to make people laugh. Yeah. <laughs> so I just walked out with maxi pads attached to myself. That's like amazing. I, so I don't I mean, I think like, I think what, just, ha what happened when you just, did that? Uh, I mean, it was a huge hit. Can you imagine? <laughs> Was Mike there? No, yes. Everyone was like, what the fuck are you doing? And I was like, Maxi Pad! Look at me! I got Maxi Pad! I want to vacate with you. What's the shit I need to see? Maxi Pad. So, I mean, I feel like feminine, they are funny. feminine hygiene products they, can be like, really funny. They literally have tape on them. Right. And you I tape mean, them to your panties. Maxi Pads <laughs> with wings. I'm sorry. Maxi Pads are funny. Uh, and kind of so with are wings. <laughs> We'll draw some delicate flowers I mean, on them to make you feel better about this whole situation. And then some of like the, the ones that you get after you give birth, they're like oh. they're like fucking boats. Yeah. They're like because you're wearing those granny panties and it's like literally this big. But I mean, I losing like, out the size. I mean, I don't know. I just feel like you can score some big laughs with feminine hygiene products. <laughs> Maxi pads, tampons. It's so, kind of sad listen, for our I'm, children. They won't I, have those floating around the house. No, no, to have they fun won't. With. They won't. That's but I'm, fault. I'm Team Tiger. Slip all the tampons you want, Bubba. I am too. Yep. You know what? He's. I'm just know. glad. I Can wish, I say he's been through a lot? He's been through a lot. He has been through. Let he put himself a through a lot. He did. It was I need a lot to figure out. of self-inflicted things. I wonder if anyone took pictures of the, me with the maxi pads I hope all, so. all over me I'll try to find it try to find it all it, over you <laughs> no there's just a couple you put them on like <laughs> I just a fix like them. in some fancy hotel <laughs> and the manager's just myself. like I don't know put I just, out these feminine products like to try next, to cater to our fancy ass and guests. then I took some for later <laughs> And then the next morning I woke up and they're like all over like the living room. There's oh like, God. like on the console table under the TV, there's like a handful of maxi pads. I was just trying to save them in case Damn, I, girl. I needed some material later. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, okay. Do you go to town at the country club? <laughs> what? <laughs> No, I only They're all around the country listen, club, my locker room, my maxi pad. Are they? My, yes, they are. They are. My maxi pad humor is exclusive to vacation. Oh, okay. okay? It's only for what vacation. What about like three drinks at the club? It, no. <laughs> about three drinks anywhere. Out Some of, of us don't travel much. So I pretend like I'm on vacation <laughs> after a few drinks, no matter where I am. Oh, look, where, look yes. here. Yes. This is such a nice bathroom with free feminine uh, products. Uh -huh. um, oh, that's yeah. awesome. Okay. Um, okay. You had Kelly Ripa in here real fast. Did you hear? No. What's happening? So Kelly and Ryan, um, Ryan is out as okay. co-host. Oh, he's, he was the co-host. I thought he got canceled. 
Ryan Seacrest? Yeah, no. He I'm didn't get canceled. Right. They have Billy Bush. Other people got canceled. Okay. The GMA people got canceled because they were banging right. each other. Okay. Um, but Kelly and Ryan were not. <laughs> and he is out, I think, just because he's got like, you know, he always had a million jobs. Yeah. Guess who's in? The new co-host with Kelly Ripa, her oh. husband, Shut Mark Consuelos. Really? They're going to have a married couple show. Sounds awful. I know. I mean, great for them. They must love each other. I just other a wonder whole how lot. this experiment's going to go. Like, because when he, when they were trying to find Ryan, it was such a huge deal. And yeah. I guess I had a schedule that allowed me. That was always the show that I. Would I watch. cannot remember the last time I watched. I didn't even know Ryan Seacrest was still a co-host. It's on every day in our studio now yeah. too. Like we just have it on, so I see them every morning, and you know. Kelly's, Kelly's always working out. Like she's always yeah. in like a leotard and like they bring someone in to come show them how to do exercises. I'm like, you really need to have someone show you how to stretch. You just like putting on leotard on TV and because showing you look good because you look good yeah. as hell. Well, more, more power to her. It's like, this is how you stretch. Oh my God. Anyway. Um, so that's happening. Mark Consuelos and he's, he's, you know, they've been married a long time and he's cute and good looking. They met on the soap opera set. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and so I don't know. It's just going to be interesting. Yeah. And, and there was no, like when, when Ryan was being selected, they had like all these people co-host for like months. It seemed like, and kind of people weighed in on who they liked. And, right. Cause he was replacing Michael Strahan. And, um, with this, it was just like, Ryan's out. Mark Consuelos is in. So it makes you almost think she did like some sort of power move situation where she's like, if I'm going to stay, I want him. Right. So wait, was Michael Strahan ever the co-host? He was oh. before Ryan. Yeah. Oh, before Ryan. Yeah. And then now he's on Good Morning now America. Ryan's on, er, now Michael Strahan is on Good Morning America. Yeah. I think he's really good on television. I do too. Yeah. And and he was kind of like discovered or whatever in that role with um, Kelly. Which and is insane that like GMA. one of the most badass linebackers in the history of yeah. the National Football League is also super kick-ass. Not just like at analyzing football games, but like being a talk show host. Right. Pretty cool. I know. Um, okay, we're going to bring in our guest uh, to cover what's on your feed and a number of other topics. Uh, he is our friend Levi Weaver from The Athletic uh, and actually my first podcast co-host, Julie. I know. You know? Well, you like kinda, I sort of know. I wonder I if he's going to be this. upset with you because you my co-host Because I stole you. Because you stole me. Uh, okay. All right. Let's bring on Levi Weaver. And we do have a special guest on this edition of the mom game. We were about to lose Emily to spring training here in about a week or so. She's still going to keep doing the show with us, but she's going to be heading to Arizona to go see all of her other friends. Besides me, one of those friends is joining us today. He is already there in surprise, Arizona to talk a little bit about the Rangers, a little bit about life, a little bit about fun. Levi Weaver. Thank you so much for joining us today. Wow. I, I thought I was going to be introduced as like former podcast co-host with Emily, but I got friend. This is meaningful. You got friend. Gonna- and I was actually about to go there because I know it's a little bit of the elephant in the room <laughs> that I stole Emily from you maybe as a podcast co-host. Um, so I'm sorry. And also thank you. And I'm sorry again. Are you, are you okay no, hey, with the yeah, whole no, situation? We, we never got, we never had like green screen backgrounds. So clearly you guys had something going on there that we were not able to live up to with the hit show. Uh, also, Did you feed her wine? We didn't yeah, ever, we didn't have, we didn't have wine. We didn't drink on our, if you we fed didn't her drink wine, our like it could have, it could have stuck. Yeah. Levi and I had, <laughs> Levi and I had a podcast called welcome to the hit show and it was great fun. It was, uh, it was super fun, we, but we didn't, we didn't drink enough. That, that was the, that was the problem. It would have well, never gone away if we could have drank like 10 a.m. on a Thursday. And That's so, true. you know, like I, I didn't want to just walk all sloshed into clubhouse later that <laughs> day. So. But it was a Rangers podcast for The Athletic, and that is where you work now, correct? Are you still doing a podcast? Just tell us a little bit about, I guess, uh, what all you do day to day. Yeah, no, uh, they, they actually COVID cost us, Emily, is what happened. We we canceled a lot of podcasts uh, not long after the pandemic hit. So um, I am no longer doing a podcast, which is great because that was a huge responsibility. Yeah. And uh, now I just write stories about the Texas Rangers, um, you know, walk around and annoy the players and try to make them tell me secrets. OK, how many years is this for you, Levi? At The Athletic, this is the sixth, the beginning of the sixth year. Overall, it's the beginning of the eighth year because I had two years at uh, WFAA, Channel 8. 
before right. I join the ethnic. Okay. And right, let's I want I want to tell our audience a little bit about your backstory because you're not the traditional like baseball writer. Um Yeah, I didn't go to Western. Do what? But yeah, I didn't go to Northwestern or Syracuse. <laughs> you did not. Um you also are very it's it, I mean, you're the only reporter in the Rangers clubhouse that wears like a hoodie at all times, whether it's 800 degrees or, yep, here it comes. Here there it is. It yep, is. He's a got hoodie. it. He's always got the hoodie. Um, he's always got a fancy keychain that somehow was affixed to his belt or something. Yep. Yep. Here That's, it comes. This See? is so, this okay. is not fashion. Though. This is because I, if I don't hook it to my pants, I will lose my keys like yeah. five times. You could, you could nip. have a MERS. So, um, yeah. If, he doesn't have a mercy. He has a backpack. Oh, okay. Backpack guy. Yeah. That Are you tough. backpack? You're a backpack guy. Yeah. Yeah. Backpack. Um, but he looks more like, I don't know, like a musician. Uh -huh. And that's probably because he actually was a musician for uh -huh. a time. So I'm mm -hmm. pretty confident in saying that he is the only baseball beat reporter who like went on international tours in a band before switching over to baseball writing. Levi, have you done any research to confirm this mm -hmm. nugget? No, I know that there are other baseball writers who have done music stuff in the past. Um, Keith Law like plays guitar a lot. Um, and it depends like if, if podcasts count. So like the, uh, what, what's the, what's the name of Riley's podcast? Um, so the drummer from ben, a band called Thrice, uh, Riley Breckenridge, he has a baseball podcast cool and name. they're, he, he's done way more music stuff than I have. Like thrice is a very big band. Uh, if you dress like me. So, um, but as far as beat writers go, I, I might be the only one. Okay. Know. Well, congratulations. What was your band like? And, and, and he like what? lived in like overseas. You lived like places. Well, yeah. Other than yeah. I was in England for a couple of years. Uh, it was, it, the band was just me. Um, I mean, I recorded with guys that I would hire to come in and sort of play on the record. But when I, when I toured live, it was just me. I had like, like loop pedals and like a violin bow that I would use on my guitar just to try to not be a boring, sad white guy. And uh, then I would just be a boring, sad white guy. Uh, do you still play music? Can, can you be like, can you be hired for events and no, no, no. I couldn't be hired for events when I was doing music either because I had this sort of snotty indie punk ethos that I didn't really do cover songs unless I wanted to. Uh -huh. And so you know, if people wanted one of my songs for their wedding, which did happen a couple of times, like I would play a wedding, but I'm like, do you, this is a breakup song. Why are you, why do you want me to play this song at your wedding? Yeah. I don't, <laughs> they don't care. Only. So you're yeah. like overanalyzing people's requests and stuff. <laughs> yeah. 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 Which is, if you know Levi at all, this is not surprising. Levi, you have a very, uh, you have a unique style. You're not a traditional writer. You didn't take a traditional path to get here. You also have a very unique writing style. You have a very unique tweeting style. Um, you know, you can, you can just say it like Levi, you weirdo. You uh, well, I mean, I think I've, we've established that. We've talked about this before. We and, and, and hey, it and, is good to be different. And back, at, listen, we're we're. I think we're both probably pretty self aware people. I know uh, how weird I am, and we're just mm -hmm. differently weird yeah. than each yeah. other. But you know, a baseball clubhouse isn't exactly the easiest place to come into when you aren't, you know, quote unquote traditional or normal. I I know because I went through it you know, when I was breaking into the baseball world, what was it like for you? Cause I think oftentimes you're like, Oh, as a woman, it's so hard. It's, it's hard for everyone. It's not, it's not an easy place to, to, to be comfortable and to get comfortable. Yeah. But it's hard in a different way. Right. So like I, it was weird for me, but I grew up watching baseball. I remember talking to Tom grief uh, for a story and he said he thought that he would have been a better baseball player uh, if he had never collected baseball cards as a kid, because he got into baseball and he was seeing these players that he had, you know, collected their cards. And there was a, a sense of like imposter syndrome um, that he didn't really belong in the same room as them. And I think for the first year or two, that was <clears throat> definitely the case for me. Like I grew up collecting baseball cards. I was like a, a huge baseball nerd. And in fact, how I even got my first sports writing job was that like I was tweeting too much about baseball from my music Twitter account and people were getting like sick of it. Mm. And I was like, okay, fine. I'll just start a second account. Like, this is where I'll tweet about sports. And ended up making friends with uh, a, a lot of sort of Rangers fans and baseball fans there, including uh, Or Moyle, who was my boss at 
WFAA, we went to the athletic together. He's at Fox sports now. Um, and so, yeah, there was this sense of like, I think I remember saying a few times, like, it's not imposter syndrome. If you're really an imposter, like I didn't go to journalism school. I didn't learn how to do this. Um, but for me, it was uh, like it, it, it time, right? Like you just need time to learn how to do that and how to be comfortable. But I feel really grateful for uh, T.R. Sullivan, who like my first spring training, I knew I was 36 years old. Um, I was not like a 20 year old kid who like really needed this to pan out because this was my career path. It was like, well, if this works out, that'd be really cool. And if it doesn't, then I don't know, maybe I'll go do something else. But I also didn't have an, any sort of an ego of like trying to pretend that I knew what I was doing. And so I would just ask TR the dumbest questions. And he mentored me and taught me like what it meant to be a beat writer. And yeah, we did different things and had different styles. We used to yell at me for saying that I was a writer, not a reporter. It would infuriate him. <laughs> You're a reporter, that's your job. Um, but yeah, I think he sort of introduced me to people, helped me feel comfortable um, with players and you know front office members and things. So yeah, he was great. And then the Rangers you know, front office was just full of good people, you know, John Mills and Josh Boyd and uh, that being there that first year, just like good dudes who did not at all big time me or tell me that I didn't belong. They would talk to me like I was um, a professional. And so eventually I sort of grew into to whatever extent I'm ever going to behave as a professional, like I grew into that. Um, it, when you look at the kind of the path that you've taken, like, are you where you want to be? Is this, you know, obviously this isn't the plan. Maybe you had sketched out from the beginning, but you know, do you feel like you've made it into kind of your own, your own thing? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I think, you know, when I was 36, it was like, if this doesn't work, I'll do something else. Now I'm 43. Um, you've got two kids. One's 13, one's nine. Uh, I've got a mortgage. Mm. So like <laughs> starting, over, starting over at 43 would be a little trickier. It's like, well, what am I going to do with no college degree? What are your backgrounds? Well, uh, driving around the country, playing living room shows and uh, writing about baseball. And like, I'm not really sure what career that would prepare me for. So I do feel like it's it's probably going to be baseball writing for, for the foreseeable future for me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I, I like it. Fortunately, baseball, baseball is a sport that I grew up loving and I played in high school and tried to play in college, but I was good enough to play in college. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, a, a topic that I've been really fascinated with since, you know, my dad bought me a pack of baseball cards in 1988 and now I get to listen to the experts talk about it. And, you know, I can talk to Bobby Wilson about catching and he's the one that's teaching big league catchers, how to be big league catchers. And, you know, I didn't play catcher, but this is fascinating me. Like, what, why are you putting them in this position or what's the key to throwing out base stealers? And I talk to hitting coaches about hitting and I, you know, I just talk to Jake DeGrom about pitching. Like that's really satiates my sense of curiosity, being able to like ask the best in the business how does this thing work? Mm -hmm. uh, like that I'm interested in. Yeah. It's awesome. I was going to ask you, and I feel like you almost just answered it, but like, I, I guess what is your, how many articles are you expected to do? Is it like one a day? And is it hard to ever come up with ideas? Cause after just listening to you answer that question, it sounds like it's not, it sounds like maybe mm -hmm. it's hard to not write about everything. Cause you have so many wonderful ideas and you're intrigued by everything. And you have all these people just at your fingertips that you can go talk to, but is that a challenge for you? It's like, this is your one team. This is your one beat and your full time coming up with new and exciting things every single day. Uh, it's incredibly challenging actually. Like, so I use the example of Bobby Wilson and, and talking about catching. When, once I do that, check it off the list. Like I can't go back and talk, you know, write another article about catching with Bobby Wilson like mm -hmm. four days later. So, uh, it's eventually every year you kind of get to be July and August and especially the last, you know, the, the Rangers made the playoffs in 2016, which is my first year covering the team, but they haven't done that since. And in fact, they've been, uh, they've had a lot of losses in the years since then. Fans start to get annoyed. Uh, if you're writing something that's just sort of filler, they'll let you know about it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, well, tell me what's interesting about this 2021 Texas Rangers team. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll write about it, but like I'm, I'm doing three articles a week and it's a lot of weeks in this baseball season. So it's once in a while, I'll stumble on just a really stupid idea that I think is fun. 
And I, I really appreciate those moments of inspiration, but no, that absolutely is hard to come up with the ideas of like, what am I going to write about? Um, because at the athletic, we don't do like, you know, a newspaper, right? You, you, it has to be every day. And if, uh, you know, the, the sixth reliever in the bullpen is down for three days because of shoulder soreness, like that's, that's a story. You put mm-hmm. that in and you, you write, you know, that much about it. Um, we don't really do that. So it's each of our articles are expected to have a little bit of heft or, or beef to them. And it's like, yeah, I got to write something meaningful. I mm-hmm. uh, cannot say the number of times in the last three years that I've sent a Slack message to my editor and just been like, um, could I just maybe like write about music this week or could we, <laughs> is there something know, else we form or like, what, are, what are we doing here? Yeah. So it's challenging. Yeah. Well, it seems like you do a really good job with it. And I think to have just kind of that staying power, you know, in a clubhouse with the fans, with the team, with someone like Emily that approves of you. It says that you're doing something right. And well, I, and, I, I love reading your and stuff. The, and the best is when Levi comes in, you know, we're doing the, you know, gathering with the manager and he's like, okay, oh, no, okay, go, uh, bear with me now. Re- really stupid question, but, <laughs> and then he'll like, what was the one you did last year where you took the poll and uh, everyone had really firm, Oh, what was it? Uh, we were on the road and you were like, does this count? I was like, it absolutely doesn't. What was it? It was toward the end yeah, of the I season. Because the one I did a few years before was, does it strike you on the side if you get three strikeouts and a half inning, but you get like a couple of hits or a run in between? And everyone was really divided on that one. Okay. Enough about you, Levi. Seriously. Enough. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's talk about what's going down in surprise. I'm not going to be there for another couple of weeks, so I need you to fill me in. I mean... From what I understand, reports out of Arizona are that Jacob deGrom's arm has fallen off and they're working to reattach it. How is that coming? Yep. Yep. He completely exploded. <laughs> oh, uh, no. He turned, turned into uh, a, a, a very large lizard, started eating the other players. Oh, my gosh. Horrible. So New that York move media really backfired for the front office. <laughs> um the, so then he got a second opinion and they said it was just tightness in his left oh. side. So oh, they, okay. <laughs> God, thank God for those second opinions. Right. My goodness. Yeah. We got it. We had to get Carlos Torres doctor in to take a look at him. And, uh, <laughs> no, yeah. Um, yeah. It, they, yeah. Get the parents supposed to throw a bullpen. I think Thursday he said not to quote him on that. So I won't, we think that it might be sometime around Thursday. Bruce Bochy said, I uh, think he'll do maybe some long toss, uh, uh, tomorrow or some like throwing and then get off the mound the next day. So, um, I mean, his, his health is going to be a question. If he makes 32 starts this year, that's going to be a story. If he makes anything less than 32 starts, that's going to be a story. Like they're just based on his health issues. The last few years, it's always just going to be under a microscope the entire season period. Yeah. 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 Um, Which is, I understand it, but you know, it's also, he, it's not time to pull the panic button just yet. Is there any chance of him not missing starts due to an injury? Like, is it, could we, could we maybe see that? Like I'm, I, as someone who doesn't know exactly what all the injury background is and what's going on, is it anything that like maybe won't linger forever? Um, the side thing shouldn't linger, but I mean, he's had just a million different things go wrong kind of all over his whole body the last couple of years. So, um, I would say, is there a chance? Sure. <laughs> there's a chance. Uh, there's a chance that I will at some point go into space. And that will be my next career. Well, that doesn't so sound very promising. <laughs> no, he's probably going to miss some time. And I think okay. it's baked into the equation, right? So if he makes 25 starts instead of 32, but those, but he's, you know, Jake DeGrom for right. those 25 starts. All right. You, you got what you paid for. Okay. I just need to dumb it down for me a little bit. And you did that. So thank you. Okay. So just b- pretty basic question. And I think, I mean, I know the answer from my perspective and I've been around, um, longer than you have, but I'm interested to see from a different perspective, if you agree, this has to be the best rotation and pitching staff that the Rangers have had since I've been here, which is almost 20 years. And I think it's not even close. Right. So they had that. If you look at them on, if you look at them on paper and what they've done in the, in, in the past and had the potential to do right. 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 So, you know, the 2011 rotation was great, but I don't think anybody expected that going in that, you know, Matt Harrison's going to be like, was he was an all-star that year, I think. Yeah. Um, 
you know, CJ Wilson was a converted closer. Like, so, okay. Uh, they, they did Eric great. Holland, Colby Lewis. Yeah. I mean, right. you had some right. guys who could eat innings and give you quality outings, but they weren't like dominant stud pitchers. Right. And then, you know, the years where it was Cole Hamels and you Darvish, like that was really great at the top of the rotation, even in more recent years, Lance Lynn and Mike Miner at the top of the rotation were great, but to go one through five, the way that they have the potential to do this year. I, I mean, you have to go back to the teams of like the 1970s where it's Fergie Jenkins and Burt Blylevin and Doc Ellis and those guys to even get close. Uh, every, every, I mean, the Rangers have always been a, a team that, when they made the playoffs, it was because they were scoring seven or eight runs a game. And then, you know, Darren Oliver, God love him is going out there and giving up five, but to picking up the win. And that's probably not going to be the case this year. The, the, the lineup has some questions. It could be kind of good. It probably isn't going to be like one of those lineups that is really feared around the league, but yeah, I mean, the rotation, the ceiling on this thing is, is that they could have, Five extreme. I mean, last year's ace, Martin Perez, he was an all-star. He's probably the number five starter this year. Wow. So at the end of the season last year, it was like, okay, we got to get pitching. We got to get pitching. If they get pitching, maybe there's a chance. So they got pitching. Um, I guess what is the, what is the potential of this Rangers team this year? If it works out as planned, pitching wise, could mm-hmm. we could we have a really good team this year? Could this be a really fun thing to watch? It it could be a good team. Uh, there, I think there are still questions in the bullpen, right? So your two big bullpen arms, Jose Leclerc and Jonathan Hernandez, came back last year from Tommy John surgery. It looked really good, but you know they're still coming back, and it's going to be can they can they do that now for another full year? Um, I think there are still some questions in the bullpen as far as the lineup goes. There are questions. You know, Nate Lowe won a Silver Slugger last year. Is that who he is now? If so, great. Um, but he'll have to do it again to prove it, right? You know, he hit three hundred. Can you do that again? We'll see. Marcus Simeon was hitting like uh, something like 180 at the halfway through May last year. Can he avoid doing that? How much is the shift ban going to help Corey Seager? Uh, who is Leo de Tavares? Is he the prospect that everybody has expected for years and years? Or is he the guy that went into an extended slump at the end of last year? Who's playing left field? Uh, can Josh Young hang at the big league level? So there's a lot of questions in the lineup that you never run into a situation where everything works out. Right. Yeah. So, so I feel silly saying if everything works out, yeah, they're going to be really good. Not all of those things are going to work out, but I think they could be good. Uh, I think enough of those things could go right, that they could be good. And, um, you know, I think probably this year we're looking at a team that contends for a playoff spot. Cool. And hey. that's a huge, that's a huge improvement it. from last year. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I'm excited to get out there. I, I love spring training. I love only being there for 10 days because <laughs> I feel like it's just the right amount of time. Uh, they get I you an Airbnb with one of these 1982 specials. Uh, yeah, I, I'm beautiful. so glad I got to see that uh, via the <laughs> wonders of uh, technology. Yeah. But yeah, I'm good. Not, I'm good not being in surprise for four to six weeks. Um, but what I am super curious about. I feel like Bruce Bochy was the absolute perfect hire for this clubhouse. And I think not only because of his credentials, just because of the dynamics of that clubhouse and what he brings as far as reputation and, uh, you know, just the fact that he has pretty much done everything there is to do in baseball and that he came out of retirement to take on this project, I feel like is says a lot. And I just feel like it is the perfect marriage with this group of players and a manager. Yeah. It's stability, right? Like you needed somebody who had the skins on the wall to command the attention of the big stars, right? Like you need somebody that that is going to not be big timed. Uh, Not, not that the big names, you know, Marcus Simeon is not out here like puffing his chest and going, I'm Marcus freaking Simeon, but somebody who has the, the skins on the wall to, to, be able to communicate with those guys and have the authority to do that. But somebody who's also mild mannered and even tempered enough to deal with younger players who are coming up. And like, I don't mean to sound like I'm 75 years old, but you just, you don't communicate with a 22 year old the same way you communicate with a 36 year old. There's, there's a little bit of a generation gap there. Um, you know, you can maybe scream at a 35 year old and they'll roll their eyes and be like, okay, he's, he's upset. I'll get it done. Scream at a 22 year old. And they're like, Okay, well, I'm not listening to you anymore because you're being unprofessional. <laughs> and kudos to them for that. Honestly, I, I kind of appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, just the stability of of having 
done everything and being able to communicate across the board to everybody from the rookies to the superstars. And also like, I think once you hire somebody of that age, there is a risk that you're going to Tony La Russa yourself and get somebody who kind of stepped away in the game, kind of honestly kind of passed him by a little bit. Boji doesn't seem that way. Like he's kept up with analytics. He knows what's going on, but then also had enough time in the game to understand like, yeah, I'm going to look in the guy's eyes and I know what it looks like when a guy has conviction and has thief. And I know when a guy, even if the numbers say that he probably matches up well against this guy, I can tell he's, he's done. He's toast. Let's get him out of here. Uh, there's the, the marriage of analytics and old, you know, just institutional knowledge of baseball is, uh, it's a rare thing. And yeah, I mean, it, we don't know until it happens, but it seems like she's as good a candidate as anybody to, uh, to fill all, to check all of the boxes. Okay. One more thing for me before we let you go. And if Julie has anything else too, um, I'm so curious to see how all the rule changes pan out. What has the player reaction been to those and how quickly do you feel like, I mean, do you think they're going to get most of the kinks worked out in spring training with the pitch clock and the band shift and the bigger bases? Like, do you think that adjustment period will leak into the season? And if so, how far into it? I think that most of it worked out. The one that I'm interested in is the the new way that balks are going to be called and they're going to be a little bit more strict on that. I think um I think it'd be that I think that adjustment period might take a little bit longer than the others. But the rest, yeah, I mean it's it's still baseball. Uh, it's just yeah, it might take a little bit of an adjustment period. I don't I don't think we're gonna be looking at, you know. July 20th and a guy's still like getting called for violating the pitch clock. I, I think that's the the point of spring training games. I think they'll be very, the, the coaching staff has been very adamant that they're going to really stick to it in spring and make sure that they get it right. They brought in the minor league coaches and we're like, okay, you guys did this last year. What are some things that the teams tried? What are some things that you tried that worked? And, and it's, you know, you kind of got the, the young guys traditionally learning from the veteran guys, but now you've also got veteran guys talking to, guys who played in the minor leagues last year and like, okay, the throwover thing, like, how did you, how did you navigate that or the pitch clock and all of these things? So um, yeah, I, I think it'll be okay. Every, it's on everybody's minds. Uh, it is front and center as they're doing the drills, you know, even when they're pitching their bullpen, they've got the 15 second clock up there just to kind of get guys accustomed to seeing it and and get into that rhythm. Um, so yeah, I, th- I think it should be mostly fine. Cool. So last question, like after a long day's work and surprise, what does everyone go do? Do you all go party? Do you have some fun? Yeah, there's a bar you guys used to go to all the time. I never have been there. I feel like I should go in honor of TR this year. Well, you never been. Okay, so the first time that I came back from Arizona, uh, I had to explain to my wife that booties, B-O-O-T-Y apostrophe S. Booties, yeah. Was was not like a. Like it uh, sounds. A gentleman's club. It's not Hooters. It just the guy, the name of the guy who owns the the bar. His name is uh, I think it's Josh or something. I don't remember his first name, but his last name is Booty. Uh, <laughs> they serve hamburgers, and they, they we're actually going to trivia night there tonight. It'll be my first night to do anything but sit at home and read since I got here to surprise. So we're gonna oh, go cool. to trivia. In honor of Tr, who was like our trivia GM. Um, a, a bunch of us are gonna go there and try and not lose. Okay, that I'm committing like myself to go to Booty's with you guys when I'm there. Okay. I'm committing. Yeah, do it. Uh, trivia is on Tuesday nights. The burgers are great. Okay. Uh, the wings are good. They have a lot okay. of, they've won a lot of awards with their wings. I'm not, I, I was not that impressed, but the burgers are, are top notch. Looks like I'm going with the burger. <laughs> yeah. Go with the burger. I would say. <laughs> yeah. Report back on how the booties are. I can't wait to tell everyone about mm-hmm. booties. <laughs> um, tell everybody that you had a booty burger. I did. And booty burger. Um, okay. Well, Levi, thank you so much for being with us. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Um, enjoy that beautiful piece of art over your right shoulder and, thank um, you. and we'll check back with you. Thank you so much. This was fun throughout the season. Yeah. All right. Oh, and I know you know how to end the podcast. Mm-hmm. You watch every episode, uh, right? every episode, you got to throw up the peace signs look directly into your camera and announce mom game out on the count of three, one, two, three, mom, mom game, game out. out. Yeah.